All right, everybody. Um, wacky morning. Just uh, Facebook is having some fits today. Um, so if you're having problems, which I guess you won't be hearing this on Facebook. So <laughs> if you're having problems. jump over to YouTube, YouTube viewers, welcome. Uh, we don't know what's going on on Facebook. Um, but anyway, so um, we are Studio R12 Stencils and we are live every Tuesday. I'm Patty. Hi, I'm Carrie. And we are excited to be here and talk to you about DIY and painting and stenciling. Um, so we are going to show you all the things and we're also here to answer all your questions. So like we legit want to know what questions you have and we legit want to answer them. We're legit. We are legit. <laughs> it is legit today. Um, I feel like I have a lot of stuff on my paper, but um, let's see. On YouTube, we are live every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. And then we also release videos on Saturday that are fun project videos. Last week, we had a special guest. Lena was with us and painted a terracotta plant pot. And it was super cute. I will share the link to that. There were She tried a lot of different things with different varnishes and just to see how things would work. And it was really cool to see how the final product turned out. And it was a learning experience for her and for us and for our viewers. And yeah, sure. So she did a paisley on there, but she also explained how you treat the inside and the outside to keep it from leaking and all of that stuff. But she did like a distressed look. She did a bunch of different things. Um, it's got a slanted side. She shows you how to manage that. So there's a whole bunch of lessons in that one. So check that video out. Yes. And then this coming weekend, we have a video for you where I'm showing you. I'm not going to show you today yeah. what we're using. It's so but cool. We are using one stencil and showing you a couple of different ways to paint it and it completely changes the yeah. look of the project. And so And we a, kind of are doing that today. We're mm -hmm. going to use like one kind of surface mm -hmm. and show you three different ways to play with it. Yes. Um and then I'm going to just uh say that our friend Sandy Hi Sandy is rubbing it in our face that she is joining us from Mexico while she's on oh, vacation. Sandy, congratulations Have on that. Have fun on your vacation. Tap, 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 <laughs> tap, tap. tap. <laughs> Yay, that's so cool. That is awesome. And then um, today is March 5th, 2024. March 8th, 2024 is the last day that you can pre-order our project of the month mm -hmm. for the month of March. It is a super fun project. It comes with multiple surfaces, multiple, multiple embellishments, yeah. multiple stencils. Like there's a lot of things that you're going to get in this project yeah. at the moment. It's a really cool project because it's a project that doesn't go on a wall. You could get, put it on a wall, I guess. Mm -hmm. You'd have to, I guess you could. It you could, could just leave out part yeah. of it. But um, it's a really cool project and it has... A lot of value so you will get a big bang for your buck and um, and then of course we show you we have a private video for only the people on the project of the month until we release it six months from now um, so you get a private video and I show you how to walk through yep. all the things give you the lesson exactly what you need to know about that and um, and that's super so that if there's any new techniques or um, unusual things about it then you can just go through that lesson and and see what to do so it's a really good deal and you don't want to miss out no you don't want to miss out nobody no. wants to miss out no um so today speaking of missing out we are having a really fun lesson on our wood frame collection mm -hmm. so we love offering fun surfaces and you can get your basic square rectangle circle oval and then we offer a bunch of different shapes and different sizes and stacked things and yeah. so today we wanted to feature our frames which will come as a two piece surface you'll get a back surface that is a basic shape and then you will get an overlay surface and yeah. with the frames you can use it as a picture frame. You can paint in the middle of it. We're going to show you some different ways to use it mm -hmm. today. And today our frame collection is on sale. I will share the link below. This is a really good deal. We have lots of shapes. We have squares, we have rectangles, we have circles. 
We have lots of different designs. Today we're going to focus on one design, but we have um, a basic one. And I wish we would have uh, cut the basic one. The next yeah. time we do this, we're going to do basic That's because I have some ideas. But we have snowflakes. We have ones with words. Oh, the snowflake ones are so pretty. We have spider webs. Oh. We have the round ones that have the overlay goes on the inside or the outside or off the edges. And today we are focusing because we're ready for spring. We're in fake spring number two here in <laughs> Southeast Ohio. We're ready for real spring in probably two months. So. But during fake spring, we like to think of spring. And when you yeah. think of spring, you think of butterflies. And so today we are showing off our butterfly wood frames. Guys, this is going to be such a fun lesson. Um, you want to stick with me here because I'm going to do, even though it's one frame I'm talking about in my own this one, um, so even though there's one thing that I'm going to be talking about, um, I'm going to do a bunch of things that are really unusual to finish up everything. So I have everything based and I am going to show you how to base one, but I have everything based and then I'm going to show different techniques and different looks. So I think, where do I want to start? I think I'm going to start with this little frame. So I have a new little granddaughter. She's, I think, seven months old. And her name is Mia. So we're going to do one of our monograms and we're going to put it in this frame. So this is the butterfly frame. It comes like this. I'll show you the other side too so you can see like maybe more contrast. The neat thing about the butterfly frames or any of the frames is they're reversible. So you could actually, if you wanted to, use a little bit of um, putty to put it onto your surface and don't glue it down. And then you could change your season. You know, you could change the look. But... They're super fine detailed. These were hand drawn um, by our artists here in our company and um, they were made with our inspiration. All of them were done that way. Um, so these aren't things that you'll find anywhere else in the world. And um, we're super proud of our original designs. Um, so that's important. But then there's a lot of ways. We've got different butterflies. So this butterfly is um, has just a little bit of that greenery and then just a simple right there and it, they're both they're all overlays and then this guy has got let me flip him over I when I was base coating him I got a little sloppy with the sponge and it leaked through went onto the table went onto my hands I had to go do a cleanup so I'll show you how to avoid that so that you don't have that but you can um, see that that is just in one corner you can change which corner you want to put things in so you don't have to have it at the bottom. You could do it at the top. And um, so that's important. And then let's go on to here. So what I'm doing with this one is I am going to do the monogram for little Mia. And then I'm going to distress. I actually probably should show you how to base. Let me pick on the black one since it's already a little bit messy. This would be a really good time to bring out the Dollar Tree towel. Okay, so um, get you an old towel, rag, whatever, t-shirt, um, whatever you want. Um, with a towel underneath, the towel would have had the wet paint on it. And then when I picked it up and folded it, it would dry on here. And then I wouldn't have slid it around and made a mess. So that's an important tip. That's like, it's a pro tip that you don't think is a pro tip until you should have done the pro tip. Well, and a lot of times when we paint with the thinner surfaces we will always throw a towel under the thinner ones are really light and, and they, they slide they move a lot yeah. and if you're That's using really one hand to hold and one hand to do it's just the towel kind of i was i was doing this um this dauber when you do this is a light surface and um and because it's got all the cutouts it's not as structural as like say this side and i was tapping and it was going as I was doing it and I was like Steve do you need me to get the towel out and he said no no I'm good I'm good he's so, used to me stippling yeah no doubt um okay I need our black out. oh you know what that is interesting just had a little epiphany I think this will work I had a different product out earlier and I held it up against the stain and the two looked the same and I was like well I won't do that so and then I realized I didn't have the paint out okay 
Jumbo Dauber. These are brilliant. Um, you that have them, make sure that you let people know how great they are because they are amazing. They're reusable for years and years and years. You need probably, I would say Jumbo Dauber, which is like three to five at least. Like I think you need three to five. Yeah. Because um, if you're going to change colors, then when you need one, you need one. And then if it's wet, you can't use it again. So you got to wait till it dries. Okay, so you always offload. And in this case, I'm not offloading on a paper towel. I'm offloading over here on my palette. And then with this, when you just tap it right on there, nothing squishes through. I, when I made this mess over here, and you can hear it slam, 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 slam. Okay, so I was using Mr. Big Sponge and I was kind of smearing it. Well, what I did is I smeared it right underneath um, the thing and I was using stain. So I do want to give a big shout out, not for any financial whatever, but um, the Minwax wood finish that are the colored stains are brilliant. Um, I do highly recommend that you hijack as many of these paint stirrers as you can and make a, um, a sample for each of them because what you see in the jar, and this is a bad example, but this is what I used on this and they don't look very much the same. So if you make you a little chip, they work really well. So anyway, I love the stains, but they're thinner than paint. And so that was the problem is it leaked under. So that's what you're gonna do to base. And then when you're putting this in your water, um, you are going to use the back end of your brush to hold it down. And that way you can keep it submerged and it won't stay, it won't dry and get brittle on the edges. All right, so away goes the towel. Now let's distress. Okay, so this is a good technique. So if you love the frames, then you know to go to studior12.com and you can go and buy some or go look at them. Um, but if you love the idea of antiquing a different surface, this technique will work for that as well. So I'm going to take this away and I'm actually going to bring the towel back because I think this is a good candidate for a towel. Okay, so we anchor it there and then we're going to get really muscly with this. And so we're going to try to rip our way through. This is not a good candidate for that towel. Um, it's good candidate for keeping it still, bad candidate for... Um, it grabbing the towel. And we did have someone say that you could also use the rubber shelf liner. Oh, that's a good idea. Under your projects. Great so, idea. And that might be more beneficial here because then it's not it maybe more grab. Yeah. Okay, so I want this really nice and textury, um, distressed. So I'm going to really dig in and I'm wiping it onto the floor. We have a concrete floor and a wooden dais here. Um, so we aren't as worried about cleanup. We just vacuum it or sweep it or whatever. If you have a carpeted floor, don't wipe it off as you go and then have a trash can for your table and then sweep it into the trash can when you get ready to do that. So that is a, another pro tip. Um, one thing that, did you see what just happened? I'm doing whoop over to the side. When that happens, you want to make sure you keep your sanding lines straight because if they start curling, it distracts the eye and does all kinds of stuff. Seems to be that I'm doing that on the side that I don't have enough pressure on, so I'm going to flip it around. Yeah. Okay, so if I was in my trash can, I'd be over here. Okay, now we're gonna do the sanding on the frame. And I'm gonna not pay much attention to here, except for maybe at the edges. I don't wanna be super mean to all of this intricate laser detailing. Sanding is my cardio. Okay, look at that beautiful distressing. Oh, I love that.
And you can really make this kind of detail happen on the corners by pressing down on the palm of your hand or the back end of your hand and just giving that a little bit more pressure. It lifts up on the front, gives pressure on the bottom. And you can do it the opposite way too, like I'm gonna do right here. Okay, and... Yay. Okay. You can tell it's fake spring because now I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm always the warm one, and so it's funny to be like, I'm the one sanding and the weather turned hot. I think we're going to be like 75 degrees, and for us here in Ohio, that's... In, in the beginning of March. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to wipe all this off. There's a lot of junk. Okay, so now we go from here, and we've got... Now, we don't want our lines to be opposite, so we'll turn this. And I want them, I think, up and down. And I'm gonna do a little antiquing kind of thing. Accenting, maybe more than antiquing. I'm gonna take number 53 and shaky, shaky. Pink's not a color we use all the time. If you haven't used your paint in a while, you wanna make sure you grab it out. And then I'm gonna grab a foam um, brush and we're gonna just tip, tip, tip. A little bit on the tippy tip. And we're going to just tint here and there. I'm not painting, I'm antiquing. Giving an accent color to the frame. Pinks are really hard to manage, so you want to be careful with pink. Little Mia has a beautiful um, uh, ribbon curtain in her, her little bedroom. and. Um, this will look really cute, it's all in pinks. So that's just maybe enough pink right there. Speaking of ribbon, mm -hmm. right before the live, we were just talking about it has been just a little over a year mm -hmm. since we made and introduced our ribbon cart and after a year, and let me tell you, this baby um, took a trip with me in the back of the truck. <laughs> it did. It has been <laughs> with us and an on in-person painting event and it is holding up very nicely. Yeah, this um, has stayed completely organized for an entire year. Oh. And what is it? Camera dropped out for a second. Okay, um, so it stayed entirely organized for an entire year, or more than a year, and ta-da! Here it is, still in its color story, still perfect. Um, you need to watch that video. It is a phenomenal idea. This is a shoe rack from um, Walmart. Walmart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, just amazing. What a great way to um, store a ribbon. Before we used to have it, um, I can't tell you how much money I spent on ribbon because we're professional crafters, right? So you have to have ribbon and you have to have it on hand so that you have the colors. I have a lot of ribbon and um, it was in a big bucket and it was horrible. So. All right, so I'm gonna show you what we're gonna to do to line this up so we can paint Little Miss Mia's initial. We have a bunch of monograms. We have a bunch of personalization. That is one of the best gifts you can give to anybody is to personalize it and give it to them. Um, they will never get rid of it. So this is a triple threat ghostwriter and I'm going to change it to the gray lead. It has a white lead and it has a roller ball for tracing. So since I'm on a light project, I want to just give myself, so I'm going to push in in my corners, make sure that I feel like I'm lined up. I want to give myself just a little bit of a liney line. Not too much. And then I have a sense for my space, and now I can center my M. I go the right way. Nope, that's the right way. Center the M. So I tend to use my fingers sometimes for things. Looks like it. So there's a lot of weight over here, and then I don't want it to be like 
that's extra weight on the edge, but it's not extra weight on this bit in the middle. So I kind of want to offset it just a teeny bit. I'm going to use this for straight. And then we'll give it a little tape. Tape in two spots so that it doesn't move around. And then we're going to go into, oh, and I wanted to mix. I forgot about that. Um, I'm going to take number 67, number 53, and I'm going to put them side by side. And I'm going to mix with my offset palette knife. This is an Italian offset palette knife. Super flexible so you can pounce your paint. Um, and I'm going to take just a little scoop of that and put it into, I've got about a quarter size of the light pink and then this melon color. I just wanted it to ease over to a warm pink instead of a cold pink. And I wanted it a little darker. So that's why I'm mixing. And now we'll go into our mixed pink. And I do everything when I'm mixing my pinks. I do everything um, in increments of money, which sounds silly, but um, I'm like, it's a dime, it's a nickel, it's a quarter, because those are common things that you know by sight, feel, that kind of thing. And it's super helpful to know that. So then we get in here and we swirl. Offload after every load. Well, it's covering really nicely. Yeah, it's tinting gorgeously. I think it's the addition of that melon color. While Patty is stenciling, if you had joined us last week on our live, we introduced brand new brushes that immediately sold out. It is our green it's an oval dome brush so it has the domed shape like our brush that patty is using to stencil but it's very thin good for getting into those crevices and it's great for shading and highlighting and i think that we sold out we introduced them early in the morning sold out by noon last yeah. week and we were able to get a rush shipment sent to us so they are back in here stock. in the building and um we actually already sold several between yesterday and today yeah. so they uh everybody is excited about okay these. if you wanted to put a drop shadow um what you would do is you i was gonna put a drop shadow but um just for time i think i'm going to not do that we have a million drop shadow videos you would slide it down and then slide it over and then you would do your gray, and then you would do your pink one more time. And so let's take a look at what this looks like. Going in the same direction. Ah, oh, sweet. Sweet little. You could take a little bit of extra pink if you wanted a little bit here and there. But the distressed look is amazing. And what I really think I like about this, I did all of these in tone on tone. And I love that the detail of the laser cut shows through but it's not completely highlighted. If you wanted it to be highlighted, it would be phenomenal. But I think that this is just really a wonderful look to have this tone on tone. I agree. Steve, could I? Oh, um, you talk. I'm going to run out and grab. I reorganized everything and they're not where they used to be. Uh -uh. I'm going to go grab the one that we have that is two colors. Good idea. Okay, so now let's go to this guy over here. Something that I wanted to show Steve, who is going to be on the video coming up soon. So I just want to point that out. Um, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, he had a really good design idea. You could simply go across this butterfly mm -hmm. with one of our cutout words. Um, so we have these in family and welcome and blessed and thankful and Christmas. And like, there's a whole ton of them. Um, anyway, but you could go with a stacked thing. These would be phenomenal on a gallery wall. It would be fantastic on this. Well, this would be fantastic on a wreath. But um, there's so many ways that you could use these in a baby's room, in a bathroom, on your garden shed, in your laundry room. Like, like, there's so much that you can do. And we have 
7,000 titles of stencils for you to choose from. So there's a whole ton of ways that you could absolutely um, make it yours. Would okay. you like to show this one off? I would like to. Oh, yeah. I love this one. Okay, so see how that makes such an amazing difference when you have those contrasts? It's almost like lace, butterfly lace. Um, and so I love that this picks up the color of the frame and then that green is just carried around. I think that's amazing. But what a difference to do the two. I can't pick that one up with one hand. Hang on. So. <laughs> it stayed glued together. It did. Okay, so that glue is uh, quick dry tacky glue by <laughs> Aileen's. And there you go. So contrast, no contrast, and it's just the same kind of frame. I think it is the same frame, and it's turned a different way, and there's so many ways you can use it. It's incredible. I love it. Okay. Sorry for the drama. If you had your earphones on again, I apologize. <laughs> I seem to be apologizing a lot about that. Okay. So we're going to take our white lead, and we're going to mark our frame on this, and do I this way? I think I want it this way. How are you? We're stopping and smelling the flowers on this one. And I'm going to put the stop and smell of flowers up high. So I want the frame. The neat thing about the Triple Threat Ghost Rider is that the lead erases with the click erasers. It erases with water. It erases with an eraser. And erases with a little bit of old-fashioned grandma stuff. You don't know. Did you grow up with that? Because you, you've you never experienced it until you've experienced I still, it. I still spit shine my 11-year-old 11 11 year bonus daughter when I have to. We're on public. I'm like, oh, no, you need to quit. Let's get that off your face. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this big old stencil. And needed it big because I wanted these flowers. And Carrie's got the skew. This is 6072 underscore 4. And do I care which way they go? Okay. And I'm going to do a really cool little trick. I'm dropping them below my line. And I'm going to go into my paint, which is there. And we're going to hope it shows through. So what I did was I stained the frame. Okay. And now what I have is paint. So I stained it so that you can see through it, and then the paint should be darker than that. If it's not darker than that, let me tape so that I can do the second thing to it if it doesn't. I think I'm pretty straight. If you can't tape to an edge, like I don't want to tape on the same edge, but you have holes in your stencil, you can tape through the hole. Okay, so now I'm going to stencil. Through that, and then I'm going to move my stencil over, and then let's take a peek, see what we have. Oh, I can't see it. Okay, good. I'll show you in just a second. And I love this the boho pattern, the stencil that Patty is using. There are so many options. There are three different designs on it, mm -hmm. so you can do your moons, you can do your flowers. There's two different flowers. You have a landscape. So what I have, and I'm probably going to need to do a second coat. I'll do it on the next one. A second coat of those, I don't know if I can line that back up. It's so faint. Okay, here's what we're going to do. To make it so that I can do two coats, I'm going to go into my sanding disc. And I'm just going to, actually, I'm just going to lightly sand that whole area. That'll lighten it up a little bit. And then I'll rebase. So I want it just a little bit darker. And we'll tape and tape. So I wanted just a subtle under thing going on. And so what, instead of swirling, I'll go ahead and stipple so it shows. And what you could do alternately is you could Go ahead and you could use varnish. Varnish is a really cool effect um, to 
be able to um, get di like a different like shine to it. Yeah, high gloss varnish from that would cool. Yeah. Okay, so stippling is not my favorite thing to do, but I love to swirl. Okay, so see how much different that looks. Let me give it a shot with the blow dryer. And then I'll move the stencil over and I'll give myself some more. And I'm looking for straight. I don't want to have these kinds of flowers. And I'm going to hold it this time. You can really have fun layering other stencils that you have. And we have a surprise coming up for using the Disc Journal stencil storage. Um, that is going to be amazing. I, we tried it out today. We had the idea, tried it out, and it works like a champ. I can't wait to show you. That is going to be like storage of stencils. That's the thing, man. Okay. Let's see, did we get to our edge? I think we did. Cool, and if I needed another set of flowers in here, I would just go ahead and lay my stencil over and pick one and put it there. But I don't think I need it. I'm going there and we'll hit that with the blow dryer. What a fun technique, right? So as we lay this over, that's what that's gonna look like. And so you can just barely see a ghosting of some flower stems. And then we'll go up here and we'll stop and smell the flowers. And that lines up perfectly. And I can drop it down just a little bit into the flowers. Okay, and a little tape. So make sure you guys are asking any questions that you have so that I can answer them. We did have a question about drop shadow, and mm -hmm. it's something that I think we'll probably end up doing a video on. You ran into it when you did your video that we released last week mm -hmm. where you had oh, some, the skinny letters. some letters that were really thin, some letters that were really thick. And so in that video, Patty shows how... We, we did it and didn't think about the different size of the letters and how we went back and fixed it. But if you're going to have letters that are in different fonts and different sizes, the unfortunate part about it is you'll probably have to drop shadow all of them in different. Yeah, different. Different. Thicknesses. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the spacing. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was looking for. So there are times that, um, like even maybe maybe a little bit with the stencil she's using today, the stop and the flowers are pretty big words that and and smell the are yeah. so tinier. So you might be able to do stop and flowers at the same spacing and then go back and do mm -hmm. the middle row at the same spacing. Yeah, it was really. Um, if you watch, what was that? Not it last week's video. The ago. week, yeah, two weeks ago. Um, so you go back just a little bit and um, that brings me to make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell because you'll get notified when we have new techniques. And I have always um, like been teaching on video since 2000 and maybe four. Um, and I always said that I would make videos if I ever could, if the, te the technology, I didn't even have a printer when I started painting, like they didn't make them for the home. Um, so, but I always said if I could ever make a video for people to learn how to do techniques that I would do that because I spent two years trying to master one technique and the day I did it, I mean, I had a like a hoopla party, you know, like, oh my mercy, you know, kind of thing. And it was phenomenal success finally, but it took two years and it should only take two hours. Anyway, so make sure you subscribe, ring the bell. And if you don't want to do all that, you can always give us a thumbs up and that will mark it for you in your Facebook feed that you watch that video. Yeah. Can you um, real quick cover what the word ghosting means? We had a couple people ask. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. So ghosting actually in this particular case, when I get up near here, I'm not going to include any of this. If I was swirling, which I'm going to be doing, I might accidentally touch the hole next to what I'm swirling on. And maybe I'm doing this, say I'm doing this in teal, 
and I want this in green. Um, you don't want to be swirling teal onto your green piece or swirling your teal piece up here and then getting onto your wood surface. So that's what we call ghosting is when you um, accidentally get into your next piece. I don't know why it's ghosting. I'm not sure if it's even industry. I'd, it's what we call it. Um, it looks really soft. Let me do it. All of my multi-maskers are not here. here. Uh, there, were there were several down. Um, oh, they're right here. Ah, gotcha. Thank you. All right, so um, I'm going to show you how to use a multi-masker, and that is an invaluable tool. Um, we have a stenciling, paint, and uh, cork and canvas kind of business here in town, and the girls, the teachers, when we brought these to them, cried because they didn't have to tape all of these little areas, little tiny pieces of tape for all the customers. If you have a class of 25 um, and you have to help them tape everything, it's a nightmare. But if you can show them how to just mask, then it's easier. So we're gonna go in here and we're just going to do a little swirling. I don't want this really, really contrasty. So I'm offloading quite a bit more than normal. Go over here. I know I want my stop. I'm not worried about this piece right here when I'm doing my S. So I'll leave that off. I've wiped off too much. Better to wipe off too much than not enough. And then better to wipe off enough. So anything that is close, this guy was close, but no cigar. Then I'll change the angle of it and that'll prevent that ghosting. This guy's, I'm being a little bit raucous with my swirling. Um, I guess I want those. I'll go ahead and mask. When you have really long lines like that, it's a really good idea to go ahead and go with the line of it because they're hard to catch the paint in them. Okay, this guy is really close. So see how that does, that's really, really lovely. Okay, and then mask over here. You can get the multi-maskers, the palette um, comes in big long strips. You can chop them into three sizes like this. Um, such a great, 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 great thing to paint with. And then you can um, cut them down to your size and you can also clean them. So you can reuse them. So they are a green product. And then cool fact that you might not know is the stencils are food safe. So you could totally use these on cake decorating and all of that kind of stuff as well. Okay, so I've got two things going on here. I'm close to my edge and Oh, so I do, I want that. I do not want that. So I need to go here and here. So you can use multiples. Give me your little guy. Multi-multi-mask. Multi-multi-mask. Like it. Um, Janice asked, would the new brushes be good to use on this stencil? Yeah, you could use this on here as well. Um, you'll notice um, on the video that I did two weeks ago, I was doing shading with those brushes because they're skinny. So you can totally do a fade really easy on the letters or on the elements. I used them on flowers. I loved that project. It turned out so good. It was so easy to do with those brushes. You could totally do a, like a little, chop, like a choppy fade yeah. and it worked out brilliantly. So they're not going to, if you put these brushes, side, uh, let me have one of the main, the real dome brushes. So if you put the dome brush side by side with the new brush, the dome brush is a circle and this one is more of a, a straight line. Yeah. So you're going to cover a lot of area with this. Mm -hmm. This one isn't maybe going to swirl as much because of the way that it is cut. Yeah. So that's why we are liking it for the shading and highlighting because when you do the shading and highlighting, you're going in more of Mm -hmm. this direction you're kind of doing like a little mm -hmm. little arching thing but if you arched with this you'd cover the whole thing you can't just load 
this corner of the brush. Yes. That's, yes. that's now, the problem. Now, this one could be really good for painting stripes, mm -hmm. where it's oh, so yeah. thin. A lot yeah. of times when we do stripes, we just do like a, a coloring motion up and down or left and right. Yeah. So this could be a really good one for stenciling stripes, but you're probably not going to want to replace your dome brush with you, this for no. stenciling. It isn't really a, a stenciling. Yeah, but if you had that and you wanted to do like an like this little area like a tiny area right over here mm -hmm. you could total that would fit in there yes. and it would do a good job so if you didn't have enough domes and you were changing colors and then this one in the water and then you can't use them wet you know that's the only thing with the domes is you have to use them when they're dry because they hold a lot of water all right so i'm going to peek I'm going to see if we think that's dark enough, and I think that definitely is. So we're going to stop and smell the flowers, drop that in the water, and then we'll put our frame on. Okay, so now you have tone on tone black, you have this lovely um, light sentiment, and you could, if you wanted to, go in and do some antiquing with a little bit of the cream. And my stripes are going up and down. So you could give yourself... It doesn't matter if I'm lined up. Just a little bit out here. And see how that started arching? We're gonna just use our paper towel eraser. A little bit of water. I did the straight to myself, I'm running into my body. Okay, so when you do that, you start arching. And we might need a click eraser. Um, if, I think the click erasers are not currently in stock, but they are magic, um, they will erase fresh paint when they're wet, and they will not erase paint that is dry, or paint when it, they are dry. Okay, so now I can continue. I'm going to arch this so that I'm making a line like this instead of a line like this. Okay, so... And we could even go a little bit here and just have fun. And leave this like this. Ooh, I like that one. So this is how you paint. And then, okay, so pretend like you did this and you didn't like what you did. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take this back away, you're gonna take this off, you're gonna take out a jumbo dauber, you're gonna go blump, 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 blump. You're gonna erase the paint. Paint is your best eraser. So know that if you need to erase something, paint's the way you're gonna do it. Um, and then if you wanted to glue this down, you're gonna use the quick and tacky glue. Um, I love the nozzle on this. It stays in the lid and the lid stays down so that you're always got fresh paint. Um, amazing. And so you would just put this on the back of this, line it up, and you would be all done. Okay, now let's get into this guy. We're going to do two things with this. We are going to show you how to change the stencil, and we're going to show you how to do a really cool antique piece. So get rid of this. I'm going to definitely give ourselves some lines. I'm going to give myself a dark line on this because it's a medium color. And then if it shows under my edges, it won't really show, so I won't have to deal with it. And this is a complete square, so I'm just going to kind of give myself the complete square. I can see it. So now we go to, we want peace in the garden, but I don't want all of this stuff. I like that stuff, but I don't want that stuff in this case. So we'll center it. Give myself, nope, gotta come over. So I've got my two fingers are good measurers. So I'm measuring on the fly and I've got like a finger here and a finger here. And so I will, okay, and tape. This is our stretchy tape. This tape actually, most tape actually stretches, but this one really, the skinnier ones really stretch. 
And I want to point out that this is a stained piece. So this is the color that it was, and then this is the color that it is. And the MDF really does a good job of taking a stain. It has a little bit of a texture, and it's lovely with the stain. So that is um, like really fortunate, I like it. I think we're gonna go in the cream again. So we'll get out a new dome brush. I could have used my old one, but I didn't know I was gonna use cream until the second. And we're definitely gonna need our maskers because we want to not have the florals. Okay, so I'll keep that one there and I'll anchor it in a minute. Okay, so we swirl. The next technique is super important. You're going to want to know about it because it is a trick that you can use in a lot of cases. Okay, so we'll get over here while I have my hand on this. You can swirl right to left, left to right. It doesn't matter, just what's comfortable for you. And now's when we need to be careful. I don't think I ghosted. You want to be careful not to get that garden in there yet because we're going to move it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is if the garden was centered, it would probably be centered right here. We have three letters here, three letters here, and maybe just look. A little bit that way because it's balanced with the big G. Okay, so I'm going to mark my line over here. We're going to switch to white. I want to know what plane I'm playing on. So I'm going to give myself a mark so I can be on the same plane. Okay, so now I'm going to center that in the middle of I think that's going to be pretty close and I think I'm pretty straight is everybody going like I was holding my breath <sighs> I stopped typing <laughs> Great, I was being too loud. Okay, and now we'll be gentle over here next to our edge. If you notice, I'm changing the direction that I'm stippling in or swirling in, depending on what I'm next to. So if I'm in a big flat next to an edge, I'm gonna go this way, and then I might lean my brush over and I noticed that on the video that we did two weeks ago where I did all of the, um, the dome, um, the oval domes, mm -hmm. that I changed how I was painting as I was going. So, all right, let's take a look. And we have centeredness. It's not quite perfect. I probably did a little bit too much. There is ghosting right there. So what you do with the ghosting is you take your click eraser. I have like eight. Maybe that's why we don't have any in that's stock. That's why we don't have any in stock because we keep grabbing them every time we want to use them. Okay, so you want to use them short. And then with a little bit of water on it, it'll just take that paint right away. It's a magic trick, I swear. Get rid of that brush. And now we go on top of here. And lovely. Oh, except for I think I wanted him this way. Okay, so... That is how you don't have to use your stencil exactly. You can move your letters however you want. And then we're going to use a little bit of this. What color is that? This is um, number six. Thank you. And we are going to use one of our foam brushes. We're going to dip into our water and squeeze it out. And we're going to pick up a skosh, which is a measurement. And we're going to blend it onto our brush, which is our sponge. And we are going to blot. OK. 
Okay, so I've got just a tint of color, and then we are going to come onto here, <coughs> and we are going to just give it a little bit of a tint here and there. And you could increase the strength of it as you feel confident. What a great technique this is. And you could just wipe around. You have a back end of your brush, which can be a eraser. It can be a toner. So you can totally play with the sponge. If you don't have three or four of these, um, you're missing out. They are, I don't know what they're called on the um, website. They are, stand by. they're called that. I already closed out of it to open I'm sorry. something else. That's okay. Let me see. They're small paint and varnish sponges. So when we typically use these, we use them for our wax is what mm -hmm. we had yeah. put them. We put them on our website as our one of our waxing brushes or our waxing sponges. So it is a small paint and varnish sponge and... It's a dollar something. It's so cheap. I'm not. I'm not going to put on the cents. Yeah. Because I don't want to be yeah. questioned later. It's a dollar something. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, they are amazing brushes, and um, and so now I can go back with that same tool, a tool really, and I can increase little areas and just add accents. And we could even go into here and give, can go into a little round brush or whatever, and then add just a little bit of a little teeny bit. Just if you know how to use a liner, this is a really great trick to just bring your colors down. It's not quite a drop shadow. It's just like a little accent and it brings it into the project and um, then when you put this back over it all picks up and it carries through the piece and Bob's your uncle. Cute. Super, I love it. Super fun you guys. I hope that you like this lesson because I think that you could learn like a million techniques just not a okay not a million I'm exaggerating today. <laughs> 999,999 techniques. That's that not even taught today. All right so we are so glad that you were here today and we will see you this weekend. Yeah. Have fun.